To get better results at rally racing, you can invest in your car or invest in yourself. Today on Extreme Off-Road, that's exactly what we do. With three days of intense training at one of the nation's premier rally racing schools. Plus, we'll drop some race-ready rubber onto our own rally car. Today is going to be all about our Ford Focus rally car. Now the whole idea of this project started when I wanted to have a race car here in the Extreme Off-Road Shop. And I wanted to do it on the cheap. How cheap? Well, I wanted to get onto the track ready to race for under $10,000. And we are well below that budget, even considering how much work we've already done. After picking up this Ford Focus for $1,500, we brought it back to the shop and gave it a good inspection to see what needed to be fixed in order to go racing. The suspension was completely rebuilt and the engine given a tune-up. Then it was time to start turning this commuter car into a full-blown rally car. The interior was stripped and a race legal cage was bent, notched and tacked into place. Total investment so far, just under 3500 bucks. We're going to start today by swapping out our tires and wheels. Now, yes, we have an aluminum wheel here and a nice low profile tire, but this factory wheel is not legal for our sanctioning body of rally racing. We need to either upgrade to a forged aluminum wheel or downgrade to a set of steelies. Since we're working on a budget, I went ahead and picked up a set of these factory replacement steel wheels from rockauto.com. Now, the tires are a different story. They do make a rally racing specific tire. Problem is, they're very expensive. So when guys are working on a budget, they quite often choose a set of these. These are snow tires. You can tell they're a very aggressive tread. The blocks have a lot of siping, so they'll open up and help shed water and more importantly, mud out from inside the tread. The compound is incredibly soft. It'll give us a lot of traction. The only downfall is a set of snow tires probably only last us a couple of rally races. But at $50 a piece, well, that's not that bad. Racy. I am going to carry a spare tire in the back of the race car. I don't need a bunch of tools and parts because rally racing is like some types of off-road racing where you're really only allowed to do major repairs in the pits. We can change a tire on the race course though if we have to. So along with the spare tire, I'm going to throw in one of these heavy duty half inch cordless impact guns. Now this is a new one from Matco Tools. It's an Infinium 18 volt gun. It has 725 pounds of breakaway torque and has a small LED that's activated when you pull the trigger. Now that'll not only speed up tire changes, but if we're doing them at night, we'll be able to see what we're doing. All sanctioning bodies are going to have some type of rule relating to fire extinguishers, but honestly, anytime you take a vehicle off-road, it's a good idea to have a fire extinguisher handy with you, and there's a bunch of different types. Now, in the pits for our rally car, we're going to have one of these large ABC fire extinguishers. Good for all different types of fire, and you could pick up one like this just at your local home center. But inside the car, we want what's often referred to as a clean fire extinguisher. Within reach of the driver, I'm going to mount this small one pound sodium bicarbonate fire extinguisher. Now, this will extinguish an electrical fire or a fuel fire, but it won't cause any corrosive damage inside the car. Won't damage our roll cage or any of the sheet metal or even some of the electronics inside the vehicle. Out back, I'm gonna mount another type of clean extinguisher. This is a Halotron fire extinguisher. This does not emit any fine dust like you see with a standard fire extinguisher. It just extinguishes the fire and leaves almost no chemical residue. The reason for the two sizes is a small one pound I'll be able to get when I'm in the driver's seat, extinguish the fire, get out of the car. The larger two and a half pound I'm gonna mount at the back. If I'm in the car on the side of the road, someone could pop the hatch and easily get their hands on this to extinguish any fire in the vehicle. 
Now, just having the extinguishers is the first step. Being able to easily access them is the second. And that's why I'm going to mount them using these aluminum clamps from Off-Road Solutions. Now, they're good and strong. They'll clamp around the roll cage with these billet clamps and hold everything nice and secure. But when we need to access the extinguisher, there's a well-labeled pin. We simply pull it and the extinguisher will come loose. That way, we'll be able to secure the extinguishers inside the race car, but when we need them, they're only one hand away. Up next, it's trial by fire at this rally school. Oh, I did awful. And what was that? <laughs> Both hands on the wheel, not driving Miss Daisy here. For the rest of the day on Extreme Off-Road, we're actually going to be on the road. No, I do not have a trailer behind our tow rig with the rally car in it for a couple of reasons. Number one, well, it's not ready to race. And honestly, neither am I. See, even though I'm absolutely in love with this car, I have never done any type of rally racing in my life. Sure, I've done some off-road racing, a couple of hill climbs, some competitive rock crawling, even competed in the King of the Hammers race. But rally racing? That's a completely different animal. Good news is, is I found a place that specializes in rally training. Now it's called The Firm. They have all types of different courses set up. And that's where I'm headed right now. We're headed down to Stark, Florida, and to The Firm to learn how to do this. The Firm, or Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park, is over 400 acres of racing terrain. From asphalt road courses to gravel skid pads and multiple rally training stages. I am here to take part in their multi-day rally school, but the facility also has many different types of motorsports training. Four wheel drive, off-road courses, ATV, we have a one and a half mile road course and we offer training in road racing as well as open track days for people that want to come out with their own vehicles and experience a day at the track. My day started in the classroom with my personal instructor, Bryn Walters. He covered everything from proper hand position on the wheel to reading corners for rally racing. And of course, how to understand the co-driver's directions. Then it was time to strap into a full-blown rally race car. Or so I thought. The first car we're going to drive is a Ford Fiesta. And it's pretty much a stock car. Because if we put you in something really high-powered like a Subaru STI, you wouldn't be able to handle it. Most people, that would be absolute a lot of chaos. Don't do that. that oh, that's bad. right. You don't like that, do you? I gotta do this. Yep. Alright. Lesson starts. Alright. Thumbs out the wheel. Thank you. And our first stop would be a go-kart track. And once I finished a test lap for him to evaluate, he had a few simple observations. And squeeze the brakes and look for the apex. Look for it. Look for it. No, too early, too early, too. Now it's pushed you out into the... I, I hear you. Okay, yes, yes, look, yes. I know you want to get to the dirt early, but we're not yep. doing it here, okay? Okay, yep. And brake. Now roll it back in. So you, we turn really late. Back on the gas? Yeah, but look how fast you come in. Yes, I, I see what you're doing. It's tough, isn't it? It's incredibly tough. Back on the gas? My biggest problem was that I kept wanting to cross my arms on the steering wheel while driving. I know, I know, He suggested I, know. I switch to a modified type of shuffle steering, where I'd plant my hand on the wheel and turn into each corner. It's much easier to pull first, then push, than it is to pull all the way around and lock yourself out. Mm -hmm. You get yourself into a corner and you hit something and you got your hands crossed up, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. It's not going to be pretty. After a few laps of this new style of steering, the tires were giving me feedback through the steering wheel that I could actually feel. Now just pull on it. Now push slightly. Yeah, oh, there you can, you can totally feel, feel that, it. that tire. Yeah, now I you can get feel a rally, that tire right, right there. And you get a rally tire with a sharp edge on it, and you want to know if you can hook the car in or not, you won't feel it unless, unless you uh, do it that way. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You, I could immediately feel that tire right. in that arm. Right. This may feel awkward now, but when you get on a rally stage, you'll go, I'm glad I know this. Eventually, Bryn started to see that I was changing how I was driving 
and it was time to hit the dirt, and we are off to the first skid pad to master the handbrake turn. I'd mentioned to Bryn that I already knew how to do a handbrake turn, so I thought. Oh, I did awful. And what was that? <laughs> Let me see you do another one like that. Okay, here we go. We'll try yeah, one too more. Too much steering, gear changing, all kinds of stuff going on wrong there. Now, now we're going too slow. Too slow. It's no, too slow. Too slow. Too slow. Too slow. Oh my okay. God! No, no. Both hands on the wheel. Not driving Miss Daisy here. And just like on the go-kart track, after some instruction, I was starting to learn how to drive an actual rally car. So roll in, roll back out, turn pull. Not too bad, back on the gas. Coming up, we're off the skid pad and into the woods for full throttle all-wheel drive rally training. We are in Stark, Florida at the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park taking part in their Go Rally Rally School. Oh, clown killer. But before I head into an actual rally stage with trees and rocks to dodge, Bryn takes me out to a skid pad with cones set up to simulate what we'll see in the woods. And more important, to practice the pendulum turn, also known as the Scandinavian flick. Look ahead, so look at the last car now, look at the exit. Now look for the apex. Oh, don't oh. block the cars. Oh, oh my God, there's all the cars. Bryn had explained the pendulum turn in the classroom, but executing it on a skid pad was a little difficult. Uh, too fast, now, see now the car's gone backwards. Turning into the corner early, away from the corner, and then sliding the car through the turn without the use of a handbrake. Now back the other way, lift off. Now first gear. No, don't need the handbrake. You're not having that. Oh, I was reaching for the handbrake. Can't have the handbrake. Eventually, I started to get the hang of it. Uh, yep, there's one. Yep. Very good. Thank you. With some seat time in a Ford Fiesta under my belt, it was time to move up to an actual rally race car. The next car would be a Lancer, which is a two liter car. We do put some suspension on it, a heavier uh, clutch pack in it. The car is getting more closer to like a rally car, at least in feel. It didn't take long before I realized that even though this car was a sedan with a cage and some suspension modification, it was going to be a handful in the woods. And when you are rally racing, like all forms of off-road racing, you never, never give up, no matter what happens. It's a right and a left, so brake, and then brake again. Brake, off the brakes, back on the, oh, not too much, back on the gas, not so much, okay. more gas now. The rally stage at the firm is just over five miles of long, sandy, gravelly, wet road. A little open, you can make mistakes on there within reason. It's a really good learning place to get the car to move around and in between the trees and mounds. This part of the day is all about reading the terrain, car control, knowing what's coming up on the next corner, and planning my trip into and out of a turn. Half turn pull, first gear. You want to kind of get the clutch up a little earlier and get back okay. on the gas earlier so the car doesn't stop its rotation. After a few laps in this car, it was time to do the same course, but in an all-wheel drive car. First, we will start you out in an RS, which is a 2.5 liter. It has full rally suspension, bucket seats, and full harnesses, so you can feel exactly like it would feel like in a rally car. That becomes now again a little faster, and there's a lot more things going on with the car. And it took no time at all to realize that an all-wheel drive car meant more speed but it also meant that I'd be traveling much faster when something went wrong, so you had to be ready. All-wheel drive cars tend to will bite you if you're not careful, so you need to learn the basics first. And after realizing that for myself, I knew I wanted to get a little bit more time in a two-wheel drive car, a very specific two-wheel drive car. 
Up next, Bryn shows us how to toughen up our focus and gives Ian the keys to his own rally racing Ford. At the firm in Florida, I spent a couple days driving two-wheel drive and all-wheel drive rally cars. But one of the main reasons that we came here is because my instructor, Bryn, rallied with a Ford Focus for many years. It's a good, cheap, easy rally car to build. There's scrap yards you can go buy lots of stuff for. It's a good place to start. He was more than willing to share with me some of the things that he's learned over the years about prepping a Focus for rally racing. This engine mount here is really prone to braking. It's designed to brake off in a bad accident and the engine go under the car. And this is the first thing that we found of rallying that brakes. So we make a plate like this, just a simple piece of angle, and we attach it to these two, two points here up on, on the transmission. This will shore this up, stops the engine from rocking around, and it will stop this plate from breaking. He also showed us some key placement of skid plates underneath the vehicle, where to relocate the battery in the back of the Focus, and that we're gonna need mud flaps on all four tires. He even suggested that we upgrade to a hydraulic handbrake and an all-metal shifter for our car. But what I really wanted was some seat time in this machine and see how it compared to the other cars that I've been driving. Right away, I loved it. It felt just like our project Hocus Focus. Sounded mean tearing through the rally stage. And the hydraulic handbrake, all I could say is that is on my shopping list. I am in love with rally racing, but does Bryn think I can handle an unrestricted all-wheel drive car? We have a couple of STIs, which are pretty much full-blown rally cars. Those cars are a real handful. You'll get some seat time in it. You gotta be really careful though. And that is all it's gonna take. With no time flat, we are both strapped into a fully unrestricted STI and into the cones. This is an amazing car. Even after just a few laps, I knew I was not doing it justice. <laughs> this car is crazy. Yes. Before we go, I want to ride with you through that in this car. Okay. Because I want to see this car what it really can do. Okay. And with Bryn at the wheel, a rally prep STI is just flat out fast. Bryn, thank you very much. Thank I learned you. a lot Thanks in two coming. days, man. Thank you for coming. Oh. But even after days of racing cars through the woods, learning a ton of driving skills, there was still one thing rattling around in my head that Ken had said. You can buy a three-day package that has uh, rally cars on one day, ATV uh, course on the next day, and four-wheel drive on, on the next day with shooting mixed in to the package as well. So if you're interested in uh, driving some fast cars and shooting some fantastic firearms that you normally wouldn't be able to own easily, contact the firm and Praetorian Enterprises and uh, take care of you and have a fun, safe weekend. And what a way to end this trip. If you're thinking about getting into rally racing, want to improve your driving skills, or maybe just want to plan the ultimate guys weekend with fast cars and automatic weapons, The Firm is the place for you.